In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today we're going to talk all about comfort zones. Comfort zones. And today I have a returning guest. I have my wife, Stacy Wilson, which I know is going to be a fun conversation because I think that we both have issues with staying around and sticking in comfort zones and how that sometimes has probably held us back. Uh, sometimes it's kept us from achieving uh, greater things than what we want or that we really have in our own life. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, it, I don't think they're good or bad. I just think that if you, as long as you manage them, it's probably the best way to go. So as I mentioned, I have my wife, Stacy Wilson here with us today. So Stacy, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Excited to be here today <laughs> and talk to you again. Why are you laughing? <laughs> much better, because that's much better this time. So you're getting so much better. So, you know, the first mm -hmm. few times, folks, you've probably heard Stacy on the episode or podcast a few times and she's a little subdued, little, little, uh, I don't know. What's the right word? Reserved. Reserved. That's a great word. <laughs> you are very reserved when it comes to recording on the podcast. But today, let's talk about comfort zones. And I know I, I mentioned it to you as the topic and you your response was? Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Why is uh, the term or the topic of comfort zones? Why does that uh, trigger you a little bit? Um, I think because... We know that you're supposed to challenge the comfort zones and I don't mind pushing up against them and through them sometimes, but they're there for a reason, right? You're given, you're given your comfort zone for a reason. <laughs> it feels well, so like it at it, least. Is it, so is it a comfort zone that, that you've described or that you've decided there's a comfort zone or is it something that's been passed down to you from other people? That's kind of um, to me where the disconnect comes. I think where I am now is a comfort zone that I've decided. So when you say now, which part of, maybe we should decide what part of life we're talking about. Um, yeah. So what are you talking about? I've learned learning. It's always, you're always growing, right? We always say that we're always growing. So the comfort zone shifts, doesn't get bigger. It just kind of shifts from side to side is what I feel like. But being willing to go outside my comfort zone to do things for myself. That's probably the biggest one that's come in the last five years, I would say, since our kids have gotten bigger, since everybody hit 20s and everybody started doing their own thing. Um, I would say that's most when I was like, oh, I don't have to stay doing what I've always done. But then to always have the courage to feel like, oh, I'm good enough to do whatever it is I'm considering that's where the comfort zone barrier has come in. I know I'm a capable of a lot of things. It's just, am I really capable of whatever it is? So what makes you think that you're not capable? Obviously you were a stay at home mom for anybody that does or doesn't know that about us, right? We decided to keep you home with our children, which is, was a great decision for us. Uh, we sacrificed financially, but at the same time, our kids were obviously I knew where they were all the time, which was with you, which was a decision we made, but that you're saying that was a comfort zone that you chose for yourself at that point, And then you've struggled a little bit to get out of it. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cause I always, well, you know, you know, as well as some other people have met me, I always wanted to be a wife and a mom, nothing more than be to be mom. Right. And be a good wife and a good house and all that fun stuff. So yeah, when it came time to be stay at home mom, that was definitely the choice. And along the way, though, and you'll back me up, I always had little side jobs, though. It wasn't just stay at home. It was stay at home, but get out a day or two a week just to help bring in some extra money. So I was able to dabble in a whole bunch of different backgrounds up until the point when the kids were getting into high school and all that. I didn't take my first real full-time job Gosh, I left the work world in 97, right? Nine, wow, 97. <laughs> and I, is that right? 
12, 5, 97. Yeah, 97. And then I rejoined the real work world late 2008. Where I started working. And I wasn't even like full, full time. That's why I went to work for the school system. So I was there every day. But it was like six hour days or seven hour days. And at that point, I chose that because I was on the kids' school schedule, right? So I was like in a full-time job and back in the real world of secretary and running the building and all that fun stuff, which was really fun and cool. But it still didn't feel like outside my shell because the kids, if not two or three of them in the same building for a lot, few years there. And then as, you know, each one would suddenly leave every three, four years, I was, I always had a kid there. So it wasn't like it was like totally outside my comfort zone. We just moved from being at home together to being at school together. Does that make sense? Well, it does. And like you said, I I somewhat know the story, so I'm going to push you a little bit. Okay. So you've said that comfort zones, you need or want your comfort zone, I think is what you said a few minutes ago. That's like you. I like them, but I don't mind pushing on them. So. Okay. So that time when you reentered the work world, you weren't necessarily pushing yourself too far outside your comfort zone. At what point did you begin to do that more so? Oh, um, definitely pushed the comfort zone when I decided to leave the school system. That was big because, you know, I had done the school system for nine years, 10 years. When I do it back, I did it for so long again. Gosh, I think Sydney was getting ready to be a freshman when I left the school system. (laughs) So from kindergarten to her freshman year, whatever that is. But at that point, I knew that it was time to grow. I had grown beyond that job. I mastered it. You know, it's one of those things they say you master it after so many hours. I had it pretty well mastered. I could do it in my sleep. I did it for, I helped work in all the buildings. I helped them all know what to do and how to do the job of the front office secretary and everything. So it wasn't much left. It was, it had its challenging days, but it wasn't a challenging job. And I've always enjoyed challenge. That's why I loved when I, when I went back to school full-time with three toddlers, (laughs) that was a challenge. (laughs) So yeah. So when the job wasn't challenging anymore, then it was time to push that comfort zone and see what else was capable. And then that's when I left for a year and kind of had a hiatus of odds and ends again. And midway through that year of hiatus is when I took on being in charge of the preschool and daycare and ran that system of 300 kids on my own instead of having a whole team around me like I did at the elementary school. So when you're pushing up against that comfort zone, what is it? What's the dialogue in your, in your own mind? What are you thinking? What are you, how do you get yourself beyond that? So that's where I think that would be valuable for the listeners today, that yeah. watchers, followers, viewers today. So it's like they might be in a point where they need to pivot whether it's a job position or maybe they're transitioning like you did from being the mother at home, right? The stay at home mom to back into the corporate world, or they're trying to branch out and start their own businesses, something like that. So thinking of a big pivot, what is it that you told yourself? How did you get yourself with enough confidence to step into that uncomfortable point of your comfort zone, right? Pushing yourself beyond that. How did you do that? Um, there again, it's it's an odd dialogue to explain because, like I told you, I've always liked a challenge. So when I would started looking but, for something new, yeah. But let me stop you there. But that, then, how does that go? How does that go along with you saying you you enjoy your comfort zone? If you enjoy your challenge, I know you would. Yeah, yeah. So that that yeah, I'm trying to get the connection. Contradicts there. it. Okay, a little bit for me. Okay, so for me, once the comfort zone is totally secure it gets boring. So when I get bored or I've mastered it, then it's like, well, now what do I do? This isn't, this isn't fulfilling anymore. So I like that challenge of, okay, what's the next thing I can do that's bigger than what I'm doing now, but not so big that it's like, who the heck, what field did that come from? So when I went to become 
in charge of the whole program, it's like, well, I was already kind of in charge. Granted, I worked for a pr- don't, don't need anybody to take offense. I worked for a principal and I worked for a system and all that. But when I took that new position, you know, you read through the position, you're like, well, I can do that and I can do that. And I already know how to do that and I can figure that out. And so it was, it's like a little bit outside the comfort zone, right? Coming, becoming the only person in charge. And it was a one man show, except for the people that were the teachers or helped in the daycare rooms, right? So I was the only nugget leading the train, if that makes sense to anybody out there. So knowing that I was going to have full responsibility was probably the comfort zone thing. I didn't have anybody else to say, hey, what do you think? Hey, what would you do? No, it was just, here you go. And that was... I was excited about that challenge because I knew I could do it. I loved kids. I understood teachers. I understood people working for me to help watch kids because we had, you know, there again, we had run the daycare in the house for a little while where I watched kids. So I understood that system. So I feel like at that point I was merging working in the school and running daycare in the house. So I was merging that world. So it wasn't completely outside the comfort zone, but to be totally in charge was outside the comfort zone. And then that was strongly reinforced my first day on the job is you take you back to that when that man walks in and says, as of today, you're in the black. As of tomorrow, when we do payroll, you're negative $5,000. Oh, (laughs) Uh, okay. And it's up to you to start figuring out how to make that money back up and get ahead. So instantly it went from something that I was going to figure out how to manage and make work to, oh, I got to make a lot of decisions really fast to not make this thing shut down, right? This thing is ready to shut down my first day. That was fun. Um, (laughs) So it was a quick wake up call, but at the same time, it was the quick, and you were there for it. So it's a little different to tell you the story, but it was an instant. Okay. So what do I cut and where do we do this? And how do I do that? And I started making decisions by the end of the next week, there were some people that didn't work there anymore or weren't working the hours they had been working um, over time at that position at the time, not my position, but the people that were running the daycare in the summertime were working 50, 60 hours a week. Well, that's a lot of money going out the door. That's a time and a half that didn't need to be a time and a half. So I hired a lot of people by the next week we had, we went from three people on staff to nine in a week. So we spread out that wealth and it brought down the cost that was going out the door on just that factor. And then food costs and other stuff, increased enrollment, you know, lots of things went into it, but I loved every, and all of people can hear me, but I loved every aspect of it because it was a challenge. It was a challenge. It was a challenge. It was a challenge. Well, the first year was a challenge. And the second year I decided, eh, let's add infants to the program because why not? Let's add babies. Uh, that was a giant leap for mankind. At the time for me, it was a lot. I didn't think it would be that big a deal, but it was a huge deal because you have so many, then that's when you realize what state requirements were and a whole new set of skills had to be learned really quick. And, you know, I made the decision in like March and by June we had babies. So that was a lot that had to happen there again in a very short amount of time, but it almost tripled the net income for the daycare in that time frame. So it was fun. So that's kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's like scary, but exciting at the same time. That's what drives me. You get that adrenaline feeling in your stomach. That's what I love. So where do you, what would you share with somebody that's out there feeling or having the ideas that they want to push themselves out even outside of their own comfort zone? What would you say to encourage them to take the leap, to take the chance to yeah. Yeah. What, what, yeah. What do you think? I definitely say take the leap because each leap went forward. Right. And if it, if the door doesn't open, it's not meant to open. And you know, I've always had that philosophy. I may sign up for 15 jobs. If two are the ones that talk to me and one stands out, then that's the one that was meant to be the challenge that was for me. The other one may have been too much of a challenge or too wasn't, I wasn't meant for that yet. But know that for yourself, that if the door opens, there's a reason why that opportunity has come to you. I happen to, I follow somebody that actually got a quote from her today, a text from her today that said, 
if you opportunity has come your way and you are enthused by that opportunity, it is meant for you right now. Go for it. It may not be easy. It may not be fast, but if it's come to you, it's meant for you. And so when you hear that or read that, and that's how I've always kind of went with jobs. If the job came my way, it's meant for me. Okay, let's do that. And when it became boring and dull, then it wasn't meant for me anymore. So now it's the next exciting thing to go try. And as you keep reinventing yourself, you get to where I feel like I am today. And I know what I do right now is who I am. I don't think I'm at my height of what I'm going to do with any of what I'm doing wedding wise and people wise, but I know I'm on the right track and opportunities keep showing themselves and, you know, different people you meet along the way. And it's like each, it just keeps stacking. So each job has stacked. Whereas right now deciding to run the business and be in the business and all that, uh, it just keeps stacking. So if you allow the door, the open doors are meant to walk through. They're not meant for you to close them. So that's kind of how I guess I look at it. So, you know, anytime you get that itch and you start applying for jobs and one pops open and you get through the interviews and then they actually offer you something, yeah, it's probably something you need to check into. Or you decide to start your own business, you know, on the side or full on. I don't know. Either way, if it shows itself, then it's worth taking a look at. See Love where that. it takes you. So let's, yeah, because you never know. Uh -huh. So we won't go too much longer here. But I was just curious then to, it's like, so you're pushing yourself now. I know mm -hmm. this because of, obviously, <laughs> I'm in close proximity to you. Talk right. about having the courage to put yourself out there in the world and have dialogues with strangers and post on social media and, and all that anxiety that gets produced based on that comfort zone that for the longest time, uh, yeah, you kind of pushed back on it, I would say, but uh, even jumping on and doing this with me today, right? You weren't necessarily sure that it was something that was something you wanted to do, but now that you've done it a few times, you're like, yeah, I can definitely do that. Talk about that just a little bit as far as how you're pushing yourself even today outside your comfort zone, how that's growing into, you know, who knows what's going to be at the end of the day, but at the same time, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right now it feels like it's daily. <laughs> a few times a day that I have to push that comfort zone. It's, it's a, it's a feels risky to put your own self out there. It's easier to stay behind the scenes and run somebody else's business. Cause if it goes flop, it's on them, right? It's well, your business didn't work. Huh? Um, I'm going to work down the street now. Uh, but when it's yours, one, you don't want it to flop. So that's always in the, if anybody's honest, it's always in the back of your mind. What if it doesn't work out? What if it doesn't work out? Well, I've tried enough things that didn't work out, but maybe it didn't work out because it wasn't meant for me. So there again, the door closed for a reason, right? So yeah, right now putting myself out there every day is a lot, especially on social media because as much as you know, people probably aren't 100% paying attention. There's enough people that are. And so do you look crazy? Do you look smart? Do you come across as, I don't know, whatever you're wanting to come across as. And the thing I'm learning is it doesn't matter. If I come across knowy, it's because I am knowy about that thing. If I come across as goofy, it's because I'm being myself and I'm usually kind of goofy. I like to have fun. I like to do silly things. I like to make you chuckle once in a while. And, you know, so so it's those kinds of things. It's not being afraid to, and I'm working on it, go live like we are right here. This, to me, is a little outside the comfort zone. But at the same time, when I'm able to be honest and just give what I'm thinking and how I feel, I feel like I'm hopefully reaching and helping somebody else. And on social media right now, that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I encourage you to put me out there the way I know you're helping me do it, but put me out there in ways that you know, you know me, you're best at reflecting who I am all the time. So 
But when I do go live or I do put my own posts of the kids or the, my own post or whatever, um, it's genuine. And I want people to know that, that what I'm putting out is genuine me, whether it's business related, fun related, inspirational stuff. I love inspirational quotes and pretty pictures and stuff like that. So when you see that, that is genuine me. That's something that I saw that morning and I'm like, oh, I love that. I'm going to share it because it's important to make somebody else smile. If I can make someone else smile and feel good, then my mission's accomplished. I appreciate you sharing your wisdom today. Yeah. That's where for me, the comfort zone, you know, it's, it's there, but it's meant to be pushed against. And if it works out, fantastic. If it doesn't, like they've, I've been told, you know, what, what's the worst thing you have to do? Go back to do what you're already doing. Oh, okay. Well, I'm already doing it. So that's fine. Love it. Yeah. So folks, hope you found this message valuable. We were trying to discuss and figure out what would be a good conversation that we could have today. And comfort zones is what came to my mind. And as I mentioned, hopefully you found uh, the message from Stacy super valuable. We both, and I would say we all have our own comfort zones. I talk a lot about triggers on the podcast. I get triggered by things that that's usually the outer limits of my comfort zone is when I start being triggered either by outside events, outside people. It could be something I can watch, listen to, whether it's on social media, uh, somebody I run up against uh, out there in the uh, in the world, and I'll get triggered. And that is a, a quick sign. It took me a long time to figure that out, but that's a quick sign to realize that I'm being pushed up against my own comfort zone. And I have to push myself beyond it. Uh, Stacy's a great sounding board to help me get that under control. I think I've done better at it probably in the last 12, 24 months than I probably ever have in my life up to this point. But that's what I would suggest for you today would be is if you are being triggered by anything, it can be a uh, anything on social media. It can be a, an opportunity that comes into your awareness, right? You can have, we mentioned about uh, having a job potentially coming up into your awareness and understanding that that is meant for you at that moment. And But if you're being triggered by it, if it's pushing up against your comfort zone and it's making you feel uncomfortable, my guess is that it's time for you to maybe push into that comfort zone a little bit. That's been our experience. And I, that's why I wanted to give Stacy explain how it was in her own words before I kind of gave you what I thought about it. But I would agree with everything she said. When you get pushed, it's going to trigger you with some different thoughts, some different feelings. And it's having the courage to step into it and know that everything's going to be fine at the end of the day. Uh, worst case scenario. And that's, that's really, we used to do that as well. We would worst case scenario decisions, big decisions, life decisions as we were getting uh, early on in our marriage that we would worst case scenario. And a lot of times the worst case scenario is we would just go back to the way it was, or we could always fall back to the way it was. And uh, that it, honestly, at the end of the day, that wasn't always too bad. Uh, it was always just trying to push ourselves beyond that a little bit further. So Stace, I appreciate you jumping on. Uh, is there anything else you want to share before we hit close out here on this episode? No, no, just be open to new things. New things aren't always a bad thing. So just go for it. So I will say this, there obviously is a lot of chaos going on. And whether you're watching social, whether you're watching TV, it doesn't matter where you get your information from. It could be your neighbors for that matter. But with that chaos is going to bring opportunities for those that are able to see them, once again, it might push you outside your comfort zone. But if you get educated, if you get yourself around the right people, if you find different ways of looking at those opportunities and see them as opportunities, I'm telling you, if you're in the right place at the right time with the right mindset, you're going to be able to jump on top of those opportunities and really uh, take control of them, which is what I wish for you. That's what I'm looking for in my life. I know Stacy is as well in our family. So work on your mindset. Work on your thoughts, work on your beliefs, work on your comfort zones, push yourself every now and then outside of your comfort zone and see what reaction you get physically, mentally. And I tell you, if you do that enough times, you're going to get better. Uh, your mental muscle, your emotional muscle is going to be at flexed to the point where you're going to be able to challenge or handle uh, bigger opportunities as they continue to arise in your awareness. So I think we're going to close it up there. I finished that thought. Stace, appreciate it. Yay. No problem. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. Folks, go out there. Have a fantastic day. 
I uh, look forward to bringing back Stacy and another guest in sometime very soon. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying the Rich Mind podcast. I'm trying to find as many fantastic guests, bringing back on past guests as well. If you would take a moment to leave me a review out there on the podcast platform of choice, that would be greatly appreciated. You can also check me out on YouTube as well. If you would prefer to watch this on video, they're also available on YouTube at at Randy Wilson is my YouTube channel. So take a minute, if you would, and leave us a review, leave me a comment, let me know kind of what you think with the things that you're resonating with, things that you would like to see improved. And I'll do my best to try to deliver as much valuable as I possibly can moving forward. So go out there, as I mentioned, have a fantastic day. I look forward to coming back with the next episode again very soon. Until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.